Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Art with Mrs. LaCourse. Today, we're going to be making a snail using watercolor or construction paper, depending on what you have available. Um, so what you will need is a glue stick, a pair of scissors, a paper plate, a water cup, a brush, and a paint palette. So um, just so you know, if you don't have watercolors, but you do have markers, you can still have a way to uh, make watercolor happen using your markers, and I'll show you that alternative um, if you don't have either markers or watercolor, but you happen to have construction paper, unlike me, um, then you can use construction paper for this. Um, or if you'd prefer, you can just color a piece of paper using um, markers and go from there. So here we go. So to start with, you have your piece of paper. And what you're gonna do is you're going to make sure that the water color palette is nice and wet um, using colors that work well together. So um, if you wanna use blues, greens and, greens, and purples, those are called the cool colors. And the cool colors really blend well together. Um, so those are great to use together. There's also the warm colors, which are um, yellow, orange, and red and those colors blend well together. There are certain color combinations of, by mixing the warm and cool colors that work well together. Um, however, there are color combinations that would make brown. So if you don't want brown in your snail, I'll tell you which colors to stay away from. So you see how this are, these are the cool colors. They kind of work well together. Um, if, once, if I added some red to the um, blue and purple, because Red is, when if you mix red and blue, you make purple, those colors work well together. So you can think about it that way. So the colors that work well together because of the color wheel. So if you mix, if you mix red and yellow, you get orange. So any three of those colors together work great. If you mix blue and red, you get purple. So those three colors mixed together work really well. Um, and then if you mix yellow and green, um, sorry, yellow and blue, you get green. So those three colors work really well together. The colors that don't work well together are the ones that are complete, um, just opposite from each other on the color wheel. So that would be yellow and purple. Those two color combinations make brown. Red and green make brown and orange and blue make brown. So if you don't want those colors, just try to keep those colors away from each other. So what you wanna do is make sure that your little one, I'm sorry. Um, really fills in the space so that there's no white color or white space through there. If there is some white space, it's not a big deal. We're going to be cutting this up and probably not using the whole paper, but it's best to not have to go backwards once things are dry. So I said I'd show you also um, a way is of if you don't have watercolor. Oh, and also with a watercolor, sorry. Make sure that you have your kids practice rinsing between colors. So if they're changing colors, make sure that they rinse their brush off because when they get to my class, if they come to my class, that is something that I definitely um, push. So if you're going to be using markers, all you have to do is color an area, not a big area, just like this. And then before it dries up a little bit, just take your brush in water. And then it's not going to be as good as the watercolor, but you can at least have um, the color come off and you have different... Um, shades of the color that you want to use so and again if you don't want to do that part you can just use construction paper or crayon um, marker or crayon so this is my final paper I've started already by cutting up some pieces here I'm probably gonna need more so um, you can have your kiddos practice cutting straight lines so they're just gonna go um, actually I'm gonna do this side they're gonna go straight across and we're making some squares. You don't want to be, them to be too little or else your littles are going to have a hard time handling them and getting them to be glued down. So start with a couple of strips. I already have a few cut out, so I'm not going to cut out much more because um, we're going to need some of the rest for the rest of the body. So I've got my strips, and now I'm going to cut them down into squares. Try to make them not flip over so I don't have to deal with that later on. All right, so I've got my pile over here, which you can't see. There it is. 
Um, I'm gonna be using the rest of this later. So now I'm gonna have my paper plate and I'm just gonna draw on here for you where you're gonna put um, pretty much where you're gonna put it. But so it's going to be spaced enough where they're not gonna be touching each other, but you're gonna go all the way around the plate and then you're gonna come inward and do another layer like this all the way on the inside and you're going to keep going down until you reach the center so glue stick at the ready just have them make a little so you don't have to have them do it on the back of this it is good practice to have them do it on the back of this but it's harder to to get the right amount of glue to make it stick so if you want to put dots on there for your littles and just have them kind of swirl the glue around that spot and then you're going to glue like that all the way around so I'm gonna do a few at a time so I'm not on here for forever with you guys I'm sure your kiddo, kiddos are anxious to get ready with this make sure that they press down so that the glue sticks to both the paper and the paper plate And I'm finding now that I put down my dots that they're not really, I have to space them out a little bit more, so that's okay to change things up. Glue dries. So you can do this part with me, or you can, whoops, sorry about that. You can do this part with me, or you can just fast forward to the next part. How's your day going? What's, what have you guys been up to on this shelter in place kind of situation that we're in? Anyone going a little stir crazy yet? <laughs> Going out for walks, playing outside, getting your snow pants taken out after mom and dad probably put them away since we just got a whole bunch of snow. You've probably watched the rest of my, or if you've watched the rest of my videos, you've probably heard my dog barking in the background. She's deaf. She doesn't really hear herself super well, so I don't know if she realizes that she's barking all the time, so I apologize for the constant barking. It's an old girl, but we love her. All right, we're getting there. And if you don't have the purple glue so that your kiddos can see where you put the glue spot, you can just do a circle of glue and it, like I said, the glue will dry. That's what I just did. It also helps save a little bit of time so that you're not watching me this whole time. Glue. All right, so this is what that's gonna look like. And then we're gonna place our paper plate behind like this so that we can see where we need to draw the head. So the head, I don't know if you can see this. Let me see if I can get my daughter's drawing pad out here and block some of the sunlight behind me. All right, so you're going to place your extra paper towards the bottom of your plate and you're going to draw 
of the snail's body. Just going to be kind of like that. Can you see that? And then you can leave some extra, um, the extra there because you, um, after you cut it out, because you want to be able to glue some space on there. So that's that there. I'll show you what the general shape is so you can, after I cut it out. So you can have your kiddos try to cut this out. Again, it's harder for them to cut straight lines, I mean, to cut curved lines and straight lines at this point. Um, but it is good practice for them to at least try. And it's okay if they have jagged edges. They're learning, not a big deal. All right, so I cut it out like this. Doesn't really look like a snail just yet, but now when I put it behind here, it's going to look a little bit more like a snail. And then you're going to glue that on. You can also use tape. Tape might work better for me. It's not really holding up, but that's also because I don't think I had. I don't like glue sticks. <laughs> All right, so there's that part, and then we can draw um, a tail if you want to, to have a tail. So a tail is just going to be a curved triangle. Add some glue onto that, stick that on the other side. Oops, wrong side. Make sure you put the glue on the right side. So we're getting there. So now we need to add eyeballs. So what you can do is you can either draw it in or you can um, cut out an eyeball shape. I'm gonna draw mine in. And because, um, I'm gonna smile. And because we're only seeing one side of their face right now, you are only gonna be drawing one eyeball. And then if you'd like to add some antenna, you can add some antenna. So the antenna, you can also use paper, you can use, um, um, forgive me, <laughs> toothpicks. You can use toothpicks with maybe like a pom-pom or something else on top. Um, you don't have to add the antenna at all. The antenna really is just a line with a ball at the top. This shape. I don't know if you can see that very well. And then you're also going to glue that to the head. So if you're using toothpicks or anything with a heavier material, try to make it not too heavy because it's going to hold your weigh your paper down. Um, and you might need to be using something a little more sturdy, like um, I say I'm a lot. Sorry. <laughs> A little more sturdy like tape or hot glue so you know bring you up and over my my snail so you can see it a little better so yeah, there it is there's your snail I hope yours turned out awesome like I said I wish I'd like to, I wish I'd be able to see it but that is the way it goes so anyway I hope you enjoyed the lesson today come and join me for another one Take care. Bye. Be well.